Good morning, all of you. We thank God for such a great a privilege to meet yet again. Uh, and we thank God that uh, for, for those of you who are able to uh, follow us on Facebook and for those of you who will listen in uh, from other uh, family uh, WhatsApp groups. So, I welcome you to today's service, today being uh, 17th of May, 2020, and we thank the, the Lord for his faithfulness and for his uh, sustenance that we are able uh, to meet in these uh, circumstances that we are in. I'll ask that we open with a word of prayer, and then I'll give some announcements, and then later we'll have our speaker for the day introduced, and then he will mount the pulpit. Standing here is your brother, Dixon Mwangi, who is going to uh, lead in prayer. Let's go to the Lord in prayer as we open uh, our service today. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you and we glorify your name for who you are in our lives. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercies. Indeed, Lord, you loved us when we were yet sinners. You loved us even when we were undeserving. You were able to pick us from the pit. Lord, through your Son, Jesus Christ, you made us to be called your children. And so with that, a privilege that you've given us, we are able to approach your throne of grace in prayer and come to you and present all the needs that we have uh, to you. We thank you for that privilege, Lord, that you've given us through your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, as we gather here today, we know that we have fallen short of your glory. We have sinned in many ways. We have failed to glorify you in different things that we do and say. So, Lord, we come to you praying that, Lord, you may forgive us from all of our sins. Lord, you may cleanse us from all that is unrighteous. Lord, you may accept the worship and the things that we are going to offer to you. Lord, we pray that you may look at us not as our sins deserve, but, Lord, you may, by your grace, Look at us and have mercy on us. We, Lord, we want to continue committing uh, the situation that we are in. Lord, we, as human beings, may have sometimes reasons to worry, reasons to be anxious. But we thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ. In him, we can find peace. In him, we can find solace. And even in him, we can come and express all our worries, knowing that, Lord, you're going to meet us. So, Lord, we pray that you may help us, that we may not fear, that we may not, uh, as it were, show lack of faith. But Lord, we may stand firm in you. But Lord, we may all the time uh, show our total dependence on you, Lord, because on our own, we cannot. Lord, we pray that even in this situation, uh, may it please you that a solution may be found. We pray for those who are working on finding a medical solution. Lord, we pray that this may happen uh, in your honor and for your glory. And Lord, when we shall be back to a normal meeting in, in our services, and when businesses will be back, Lord, we shall be careful uh, to thank you. But Lord, we continue praying that even in this situation, uh, that many people may uh, be drawn closer to you, many people may realize that you indeed are our God. So Lord, we also continue praying for the service that we are in today. We pray that, Lord, you'll be with us. You're going to guide us, be with the man that you have appointed today to speak uh, from your word. We pray that, Lord, you're going to use him 
and use him mightily, that he is going to rightfully uh, divide your word, that he is going to deliver the message that comes from you, and that someone somewhere will be encouraged. Someone somewhere who does not know you, God will be uh, pointed to you and will be convicted of their sins. We pray that, Lord, this will be a time that your word will be spoken and your people will be encouraged. So be with us and guide us, for we pray and ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Um, the next thing we are going to do, I am going to bring the church notices. And like I introduced myself says this morning, it's me, your brother, Dixon Mwangi, Njoroge, and I greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, amen, and I welcome you in Jesus Christ and our Savior, all of you, our and the associates of Ndeke Village Chapel, and all of you who are able to follow us live on Facebook, and all of you who are able to follow us on our WhatsApp a, a church family group. We thank our God for his protection. We thank our God for his sustenance to all of us during this difficult time of COVID-19 pandemic. We definitely miss the presence of each other so much and we look forward to a time when we'll be able to gather again. We welcome you to our church service this morning, uh, uh, this broadcast through our church family WhatsApp, which will be posted later, and our Facebook, which is live. Uh, this will be, we'll have our preaching undertaken by our brother, Dr. Billy, who will be introduced to us. Then, the next thing is that we urge you in this time of COVID-19 pandemic to observe the presidential, the ministry of and till further notice. So follow the things that we are informed, uh, that we are being informed, and even the elders' directives. Among other things, we have uh, this directive to adhere to, which include stay at home with your family, use sanitizers, or wash your hands using soap and water, wear face masks, uh, face masks in public places and on public vehicles, avoid crowded places, Observe the one meter social distancing. Avoid unnecessary traveling inside and outside the country. We also need to realize and understand our Christian responsibilities during this time, which we are reminding you that you should not forget your Christian responsibilities uh, even uh, with the civic responsibilities we have just mentioned, include um, spending time with the Lord in prayer, spending time in devotion in your families and in your family closets, attending to the church offering as the Lord blesses you, playing for God's uh, intervention in this COVID-19 pandemic, and also remember to be of good cheer in the Lord. Amen. This time we are going to have a Bible reading, a public a reading of the scriptures, and this will do from the book of Ephesians, from the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, from verses 1 to 10. The book of Ephesians, 
chapter 5, from verses 1 to 10. Ephesians chapter 5, from verse 1 to 10. I commence reading from English Standard Version. Verse 1. Therefore, be imitators of God as dear children. Walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. Fornication and all uncleanness of covenant as is fitting for saints. No talking, no coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know that no fornicator, unclean person, nor who is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive, deceive you with empty words, for because of these things, the wrath of God comes of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers with them. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteous, and truth, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. Amen. This time, I will call upon our elder, Mr. Botta, to introduce our speaker today. Um, I have the pleasure and privilege to welcome uh, Sichone. He's coming from uh, uh, Grace Reformed Baptist Church in Indola. We are happy to have you uh, for ministry in these circumstances and in this special way uh, through uh, social media. I recognize that our brother is with his family and I want to take cognizance of their presence and also express how happy we, ha we are. Uh, we actually had planned that our brother was going to take a guest service of a normal service uh, when we set out to plan our, uh, uh, the, 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 the schedule of preaching for our church. Today was supposed to be a guest service and we had planned that our brother would come and speak. Uh, of course, uh, perhaps we have a bigger guest service, so you would like to think, uh, and he comes to speak to us as having earlier, uh, has been, having been earlier scheduled, uh, and in God's divine wisdom and providence, he, he, he himself had designed it that this is the way our brother will be introduced to our church, uh, which he has not been, <laughs> but uh, in the circumstances. We welcome you, brother. Uh, we are so happy to have you in our midst and to have you minister from our pulpit. It's a privilege to uh, bring God's word here and thank you, uh, Dr. Bota, for this opportunity to come and share God's word. And, um, I'm praying that um, the things that we shall share uh, will be of immense benefit, not only to us here who are immediately in this place, but uh, elsewhere where uh, we find ourselves uh, listening to God's word. And um, as we begin our discussion, I would, I would like us to um, pray again. Uh, that uh, God would help us. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for this time and we ask that as we look at your word in Ephesians that you would speak in clear terms. This we ask and pray in Jesus' name. 
Amen. Let's turn to Ephesians chapter 5, the passage that was uh, read earlier on um, uh, as our brother Dixon was, was reading, and uh, we'll do well to read parts of that uh, passage. Uh, I won't do an exhaustive exposition of what is in there, but I pray that uh, we will <clears throat> learn something from them. Let, let's read verse um, 6 and uh, all the way to verse 9. The Bible says there, Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of such things God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. Therefore do not be partners with them, uh, for you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. For the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Now, uh, we live in increasingly, um, would I say, dynamic times. There are so many things that are happening, although we know that in recent days the world has kind of slowed down, unprecedented really, uh, because of uh, the situation that we find ourselves in. Uh, we have COVID-19. But in a sense, uh, although we have slowed down in many ways, there are certain things that must go uh, For instance, the Christian life must be lived. We must continue to live the Christian life to the glory of God. We must continue to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we must continue to share God's love to those uh, that are dead in sin. And so this morning, I, I seek to bring to you uh, from Ephesians chapter 5, and particularly my interest is verse says there, for you were once darkness, but in the Lord live as children of the light. Uh, and like I said, we live Many things are changing. Um, the way that people view uh, life, the way that the people, people react to life uh, in this new normal that we find ourselves in where we can't go outside, there's a way in which we have to adjust. And perhaps some adjustments may be permanent. Many others might be here just for a short time. And so as Paul is writing to these Christian people uh, at Ephesus, he, he, he knows that the gospel has gone in territories previously where the gospel had not been known. And, and, and there's a way in which that these Christian people are responding or reacting uh, to the message that is from the King of Kings. Some uh, would like to change the way they behave, but others even after becoming Christians, continue to uh, carry on certain practices that uh, are not consistent with the Christian faith. And so Paul is writing to these Christian people to encourage them, but also to talk about uh, many things that Jesus has done in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we, like I said, in, in our country, we are in... Dynamic times. There is so much religion that is going on. There is uh, what you call pluralism. Uh, in other words, there is a multiplicity of religions that are going on. There was a time when uh, Christianity was clearly the leading religion in this country. But more and more as we go on, there are many other religions that are coming. And each religion claims to be the authentic message or religion that is coming uh, from God. And, and Paul, as he's writing to the Ephesian people, he is cognizant of the fact, and he knows that the, these people uh, either have a background or they interact with people that do not know the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and, and if you have been a, a student of the Bible, you recall that uh, the book of Ephesians is one of Paul's epistles. Uh, Paul is the author. There's no doubt, there's no dispute about uh, him being the author. And, and it is said that he wrote in AD 60, between AD 60 and AD 62. And he is writing to a Christian people who are uh, 
Ephesus. People argue that this was a general epistle. He is writing to a group of churches. But whatever the case, he is writing to Christian people that they might take note of what Christ has done. So if you read through the book of Ephesians, you notice that Christology keeps coming out. Christ, Jesus Christ, what he has done, the great salvation he has given to us that we might become children of God. And as Paul is writing this epistle, he is bringing out the richness, the greatness of God's glory, how that Christ who is our savior has saved us with such a great salvation and you notice in ephesians 1 as he writes he he in verse 4 he talks about uh, praise and glory being ascribed to god because he has saved them before the foundation of the world he is the one that elected them he chose them in christ and in love, he predestined them to be conformed unto the likeness of Jesus Christ. But he goes further. He talks about how that in time, God saves his people. When he saves his people who are dead in their sins, he adopts them as his. So friend, if you are a Christian, Paul in Ephesians is saying God has done such a glorious thing. But friends, I don't have much time to look at the entire epistle to give a panoramic view. But suffice to say that you cannot miss Christ. In fact, one of the older theologians used to call that Ephesians, we used to say, Ephesians is pregnant with Christ. And almost in every sentence, Jesus Christ or Christ is mentioned directly or indirectly. So in other words, this is a great epistle. Please take time uh, to, to read it. But I don't have much time, like I said, and I would like us to come to chapter 5. Uh, Paul has been dealing in the, uh, would I say, three chapters or four. He's talking about the glorious riches that we have in Christ. And, and he seems to digress at some point, uh, and he talks about other things, then he returns and so forth. But in chapter 5, it's more or less like he's applying what he has stated in the first few chapters. From chapter 4, of course, verse 17. He is applying what he has said. And I would like us to notice uh, a number of things. Two things, really, that I want us to notice uh, in uh, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 8. Let's read that passage again. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of the light. Two things, uh, briefly. Firstly, you notice uh, what I have called the contrast. The contrast. Notice what he says in verse 8. For you were once now in the Lord. The contrast that you see. But secondly, uh, to observe is the imperative, or in other words, the command or the encouragement. Uh, not, not, not advice per se, but it's, 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 it's an imperative, it's an instruction. Obey. Notice what it says um, in the last part of verse 8. Live as children of light. That is the imperative. Firstly, uh, what is the contrast? Now, when Paul is writing to a Christian people at Ephesus or wherever they are in Asia Minor, <coughs> he knows that these people have got a Roman uh, background. They, 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 are, they are influenced by Greek mythology, Greek uh, teaching, and these Greeks believed in many gods. Not only did they believe in a pantheon of gods, as, as some would call it, but they, 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 they also had a certain lifestyle. There were certain things that were normal. There were certain things that were expected of those people that lived at Ephesus. One of them is to worship this god called Diana, this uh, idol called Diana. These people were supposed to worship this idol. 
But the other thing that you notice about Ephesus is that drunkenness, immorality, uh, and, and, and all sorts of things were no more. They were expected, lying, stealing from each other, all sorts of things were expected in that time. Paul is writing to the Ephesians. As he is writing, he says this. He begins with the word for. Now, if you, uh, uh, you, you don't need to be a scholar, but somebody just basic understanding. You notice that the word for, he is connecting some ideas. He has been saying certain things before this, and then he is continuing his argument. He says, for you were once darkness. That's a statement. For you were once darkness. In other words, the Christian people at Ephesus have a history. They, 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 before they became Christians, before they turned to the Lord Jesus Christ, they had a background. And when they were not Christians, they were darkness. Now the phrase there uh, can have two meanings. One of them is when he says darkness, it may mean that there were darkness itself. In other words, there was nothing that was good. There was nothing that was morally upright. They were without God and without hope in the world. They were morally bankrupt. But they may not necessarily have been people who were evil, immoral, wicked per se. They, they, they probably were good people. Not as bad as we might call them, but they were without God. They were without hope. They did not have Christ. For you were once darkness. So the, 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 the first understanding would be darkness itself. But secondly, the same darkness, it, it could mean uh, that um, the way they thought, the way they reason, the thought process and, and imaginations and, and, and aspirations were far away from God. They did not have God. They were outside the commonwealth of Israel. They did not know God. They did not love God. They did not live for him. They lived for themselves. They may have been going to church, maybe at Ephesus itself. Or they may have been going to the temple. They may have been religious, but in their heart of hearts, they were separated from the life of God. For you were once darkness. And the point I'm saying is every person that claims to be a Christian now has a past. They have a history. They can say things that have been true about them before they became Christians. You, you were once darkness. And you know, friends, sometimes when you are listening to testimonies and, you know, or talking to some people, some, they give you the impression that they are sinless. They've never sinned. Uh, sin is very far away from them. Wow. Uh, and as though they have never even sinned in their past. But you know, friends, Paul is saying, like everybody else, we were dead in our sins. Ephesians 2 verse 1, to underscore what I'm trying to say. Ephesians 2 verse 1. This is what he says when he's talking about uh, this darkness or this deadness. This is what he says in Ephesians 2 verse 1. As for you, that is Ephesian Christians, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world. Anybody that is a Christian now has a history. They did not have God. They were without God. They were dead in their sins. But there came a time when they came to Jesus Christ. But secondly, uh, notice that verse. Uh, he says, for you were once darkness. Now what does he say? But now you are light in the Lord. 
But now, in other words, these must have been trespassed. This is how you were. This is how you lived and carried yourself along in this world. But a time came when you uh, faced your sins. You came face to face with your maker. And you turned from sin. And you turned to Christ. The Christian person is a transformed person. The Christian person is somebody in whom the grace of God has worked and now they're children of God. But now you are light in the Lord. So in other words, all of us here and elsewhere, if we claim to be Christians, we can say for a fact, there was a time when I lived for myself. There was a time when God was not central in my life. Yes, I had a religious affiliation, but God was far away from my heart. But now, now, I am a new creation. Christ has changed and transformed me. But now, you are light in the Lord. In other words, if you and I are Christians, our lives must be different. Yes, they must be different. The way that we think, the way that we reason, the things that we love, the company that we keep, the books that we read, the music that we listen to, all these things, the way that we dress, all these things, everything about my life has changed. But now, you are light. Now, of course, the phrase that is used there, light, has to do with God, God's light emitting from us. You know, when a person becomes a Christian, the Holy Spirit comes and lives in them. That's why I don't believe a Christian can be demon-possessed, for instance. Why? Because God himself, by his Holy Spirit, indwells a believer. God, at the time that I become a Christian, comes and takes residence in my heart. And I am now, I am his, and he is mine. So friends, if you understand scripture, Certain things should not confuse us. And Paul, as far as Paul is concerned here, he, he, is not, he may not be talking about demons per se. He may not be talking about other things directly. But what he is saying, the point, the central idea, is that when a person becomes a Christian, there is a radical change. And that change does not take Two, three years, it is a radical change. An instantaneous change. God, by His Spirit, comes and arrests this rebellious heart. He takes away the heart of stone and He puts in a heart of flesh. He takes away the unclean spirit and He puts in His Spirit. And as the Spirit lives in us, we are able to cry, Abba, Father, a very intimate word. And you can only say, Abba, Father, because you have a relationship with him. And he is your God. He is your Father. And when you say, Abba, Father, uh, there is a witness of the Spirit in our hearts that we are children of God. For you, we want stuck. But, and that's where the contrast comes in, but you are now light in the Lord. And like I have said, this light, we are light because God lives in us. This light that we emit, this light that we give out, this light that we radiate, it is because Christ lives in us. Remember in 1 John chapter 2, verse 5, it talks about God 
is right. And when God is creating the world in Genesis chapter 1, one of the earliest things that he creates, in fact, perhaps the first, is let there be light. This light radiates what is hidden. This light makes darkness disappear. This light has the, the sense of idea of the purity of the holiness of God. And Paul is saying to the Christians at Ephesus, You, you are right in the Lord. And if he came to Ndeke Village Chapel, he would be saying, Brethren, Christian brethren at Ndeke Chapel, you are right. You are children of God. You have been adopted. But implied in that statement, or that those phrases I've said, is that there's something that must emanate or come of our lives. Light. You are light in the Lord. Not in our own strength, not in our own wisdom, not in our own unity or, or intelligence. No. It is because Christ. Because Christ is alive in us. Because the Spirit of God indwells us, who comes in us. And He never leaves us. We are. What are we saying? When the apostle talks about them being light, he is assuming or he is stating that they are regenerated or they are transformed by the power of grace. But also that they are holy, they are pure, they are saints, they are people who have been set apart for holy use. Friends, becoming a Christian is not just talking and claiming and saying certain words in a certain frequency, uh, sequence rather, or a formula. Oh, I said the sinner's prayer. Oh, the way I cried when the preacher said, Don't must be a Christian. Oh, because I pray many times. Then I must be a child of God. No, friends. It is a transformed heart. You are light. In the Lord. But more, more than just we ourselves being transformed, but that we ourselves show or demonstrate the light of God to those that are dead in sins. Before we became Christians, we used to live in a particular way. But because God has done such a great work, we need to show that light. Whether we like it or not, but that light must be seen. It cannot be hidden. You know, many uh, years ago, somebody used this illustration. Uh, and I don't know if it actually happened, but I think it did. Is that, <clears throat> uh, you know, some brethren came to this workplace and said, Look, uh, I'm looking for a Christian here. They say, ah, Here, Christians. A Christian here. Ah, no, Tawaba. Uh, and then uh, says, oh, I'm looking for so-and-so. I say, oh, yeah, that one. But uh, are you saying that that person is a Christian? Oh, I'm a Christian. You know, uh, we, if, he didn't, if he didn't tell us, we wouldn't have known that this person is a Christian. Friends, Paul is saying, you are the light of the world. Your light cannot be hidden. It must be seen. Others must be pointed to Christ because of you. And some Christian people, because of COVID-19, have stopped talking about the gospel. They have. And you hold it in a distancing. No, Kutushako, yeah, Shaku Chet Chetzon, Kushmiakona Galait, why Kalako Feso? So, Covid nineteen Gayapwa, Kara Salam Samaso, why said, Now let's continue. No, friends, even in this difficult time, we must preach Christ. Of 
course, observing the, 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 the recommendations that are in place. In our homes, where we are, with our families. That's the time to share the gospel. Time to spend time with our children. That's the time to model the Christian life. I read something a few weeks ago where one man was complaining. He said, ah, COVID, you can't do it. I'm going to go to the house. What's the difference? So the man was praying that COVID-19 goes away. But you know, the most interesting thing is that the wife, I think, was a believer and was asking, was expecting the man to lead in devotion. Now, Mudala doesn't like if you are church, church, you know? So when it's devotion, the wife noticed, ah, and she was to church. So he would come. One day he came to church, I mean to the family altar, <clears throat> and as they are sharing, the wife is sharing, then she asks him, can you give a testimony? Asking the husband. Ah, the guy, why, why are they beat? No, no. And the wife insisted, testimony, Kairi, Mudala. Okay, she wasn't using the word that Mudala. But, but, you know, testimony. So... You know what the man did? He got a phone out of his pocket and as though he was going to answer a phone and he went to the bedroom and he never came back. <laughs> Why? Because life is tough for him. And afterwards, the wife followed him and said, you are supposed to be us in prayer. You are supposed to be the priest. <laughs> I don't know where she uses that, but, but she has a point. The gentleman needs to be competent. So Christian people, Christians, you must be right in your home. Husband, wife, children, live as children of the land. But we must go on. This is what he says in verse 8. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Now the imperative, uh, the imperative command, that, that is a command that he gives. First of all, he has stated what they were, the contrast that has happened. Now he's talking about what they should do. He says, because God is at work in your lives, you must Live as children of light. Live. The Christian man and woman, boy and girl, must practically live the Christian life daily, every hour. They must carry Christ not only in their hearts, not only in their Bibles, but the entire of their whole being. They must live as children of light. I'd like to introduce a, like a word here, um, perhaps some of you would know it, that when Paul is saying you were once darkness, but now you are light, he is really talking about issues to do with worldview. In other words, because you have become a Christian, the way that you think, the way that you reason, the company that you keep, and many other things must change. It is not enough that you claim to be born again, but your mind your perceptions, your greeds, the way that you react to the world must increasingly conform unto the likeness of Jesus Christ. The way that you think and reason must be according to God's word. It's not what everybody is saying. It's not what everybody is doing. But it is according to his word. And so when Paul is saying, Live as children of the light. He's simply saying, that which you claim to believe, if God is at work in your life, if God has transformed you, and if your perceptions and worldview is changing, it must be reduced into practice. Live. Live as children of the light. Now, we live in interesting times. Many people have the language of Zion. 
They talk about the word of God. Hallelujah. God is blessing me. You know, Jehovah Jireh. They, you know, they use all those fine sounding evangelical words. But look at their lives. Look at their profession. Look at how they live in their daily lives. At home. At school. At work. You know, at church... We are all sanctimonious, isn't it? Very good and nice. And if somebody steps on your foot, you say, ah, it's okay, brother, and, and so on. But if somebody does it at home, <laughs> what, 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 what? And Paul is saying, no, friends. You need to demonstrate. You need to live the Christian life. It must be evident to all. Those in authority at the moment are saying that we should keep indoors, that we should have masks. Oh, I have a mask, by the way. Yeah, they have, we should have masks and we should uh, socially distance and so on. Christian people must be the one in the lead to demonstrate that this is good. Now I'm saying that guardedly because sometimes those in authority might tell us to do something that goes against God's word and that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about that which is right, good, acceptable and within the will of God. Notice what he says in verse 10. He says this <clears throat> and find out what pleases the Lord. In other words, Christians must be inquisitive to find out what God's will is in every situation. It's not what the newspapers are saying. It's not what the experts are saying. It's not what this, that, and the other are saying. It's not even what the pastors are saying. But what is the Bible saying? What does God say in his word? Find out what pleases the Lord. But something that is clear in verse 11 have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness. Now, we, we live in what is known as postmodern times. And postmodern, we mean, you know, a time where, you know, everything is relative. It depends how you look at it. For you, it's okay, but for me, no. So, your, your opinion, don't impose it upon me. Paul is saying, no. There's such a thing as right and wrong. And how are you going to find out? Find out what pleases the Lord. But the other thing that you notice when Paul is saying, live as children of the light, the imperative, is that Christian people must be different. Yes. First of all, they have the light of God in them. But secondly, they trust in God. Even in difficult times as this. Some have lost jobs. Others are sick. The rest of the world is panicking against COVID-19. Of course, some people say, I would rather die of COVID-19 than this, this. The rest of the world is panicking. But the Christian should not panic. Why? Because God is their father. God is in control. And he is going to supply their needs in Christ. as children of the light. Friends, time is more than God. But let me just uh, give a few applications. Firstly, I'd like to ask this question by way of referring to this um, passage. When Paul is writing to the Ephesian people, he is saying, you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. I'd like to ask you the question, on which side of that phrase, or would I say that statement, do you belong? Are you light now, or are you darkness now? You were once. He's talking about a past life. Not a life that is mixed. Then they, you do that, ah, you know, I'm a weakness. You know, in fact, these days, we don't call sin, sin. We call, yeah, you know, weaknesses, you know, the moral failures, and we don't want to mention the word sin. And Paul is saying, you were once darkness. You are listening to me. On which side of that 
statement, are you, are you light or your darkness? But secondly, I would like to ask that as Paul is writing to the Ephesian people, he expects that they are having a transformation of their mind, their worldview, the way they look at the world, the way they react, the way they do things must be changing. It's not enough that I have stopped doing this other than the other, but the way that I think, the way that I reason, I reason from the scripture outwards. And so when I'm, when I'm, when I'm thinking, I am thinking biblically. In other words, I'm thinking evangelically. should flow out of us. Is that happening to you? You were once darkness, but now you are light. That change is serious. And notice I'm saying, he's writing to Christian people. They are saved. They are born again. And this work or this work of sanctification of changing ourselves must. But thirdly, I'd like to ask this question. What type of lifestyle are you leading? What type of lifestyle are you leading? You claim to be a Christian and you're saying hallelujah and, and all those nice things. But what is your lifestyle like in, in the public place and in the private place? You know, in the public place, we, we all pretend but in the private place, that's where really the real you comes out. And even this lockdown that we, COVID-19, I'm wondering if your spouse can say, ah, but my husband or my wife is godly. Many of us want to run away so that your character is not really known. Your children, can they see that my father, my mother, is a Christian. And young girl, young boy, can your father or your mother, your brothers and sisters, your siblings, can they tell that you are a Christian? Live as children of the light. And notice when he gives that, it's an imperative, it's a command. It is not a suggestion. So if you don't, then you are sinning. Oh may God help us as we um, seek to understand God's word. Amen. We pray. God, our Father, we thank you for the ministry of your word this morning that came to us so clearly, so powerfully, in its simplicity. We thank you, all living God, for your servant whom you put aside, whom you sanctified for us. And this morning, that you could come and minister your word. Father, it is true that as Christians, we have our background, we have our history. Our background and the history is anchored on darkness. Even the lifestyles of the life that we lived. But we thank you, O living God, for the power of the gospel that came to us at our appointed times. And the Father, your servant has belabored your word, aging us, O oh Lord, through your word, that we are as children of light in righteousness and in holiness. That indeed there should be a transformation in our lives. That our lifestyles must be changed from darkness to light, O living God. 
And as we reflect, we ask those questions that uh, your servant be left to our On which side are we? Are we still moved from darkness to light? If we are light, O oh Lord, what kind? What is our world view? World. What is our world view? Is it biblical? Oh Lord, is it truth on your word? Father, also help us to be ministers of your word in our family closet, and particularly this time of the COVID-19, that indeed we may get the opportunity to share in devotion, to share your word, to pray together, to encourage each other as families. Help us, O oh Lord, to walk, whether there is COVID-19 or not, and to take every opportunity to be sensitive to the calling that you have called us, even walking as children of light in all our aspects at home, at work, in public life, elsewhere. May we indeed testify vividly and clearly in the demonstrations of our lifestyles that we are indeed the children of light. So help us all, living God, to embrace your word this morning and to apply it to ourselves individually and to take not of its implications upon us. Continue, O living God, to minister to us as we read this wonderful passage again that you may continue to speak to us. We pray for all the family members of this church and those that are listening that you will continue to bless us we will continue to put a hedge around us against the COVID-19 pandemic. And that, O oh Lord, it may please thee to intervene and to bring again, uh, normalize the situations that we may continue to minister to each other and uh, to walk this pilgrimage. Bless us, O oh Lord, and bless your servant and his family that have come to minister to us. Until we meet again, we pray, we ask, and we plead your message through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen.